By the way, I'm using the uh, annual general meeting text channel for this meeting. If we're able to wait a few minutes before starting, I'd like to um, to change my location. So I'm going to disappear for just a couple minutes. I should be right back. Understood. Yeah, yeah sure.
Testing, testing. Is my audio still good? Sounds good. Recording's picking it up fine. Uh, You're recording it? Last minute attempt to use the same software I use for the Q&A broadcasts to record this. So it should produce a video with just a single slide and all the audio from our meeting. Okay. So no one uh, else is turning on their camera. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm um, connected with a mobile device for the audio. Somehow it doesn't work too well on my laptop. I don't know why. It happened to me as well many times. Okay, it's 5.33, should be, oh, well, I'm talking in the end. Um, could we wait for maybe one minute or two minutes more? Nothing to do with them. Cool. We can start. So, welcome everyone uh, to our annual general meeting. Uh, thank you for joining us um, in this yearly meeting, which uh, we are actually required to have being a registered charity organization in Canada. Um, for those who may not know me, my name is Austin and I'm also the secretary for our organization. Right. Um, well, here's an interesting fact to start off with. Um, we were incorporated on 22nd March 2013. And so this year actually marks completing a decade for our organization uh, officially in existence. So, Sadhu. Um, Sadhu. Uh, we would like to take uh, this uh, 10th year anniversary to thank and remember all our volunteers for their selfless contributions, starting with the many from the past um, who may not be volunteering with us anymore, but who really set up and ran our organization for us, uh, which we have fortunately inherited uh, today. And of course, our volunteers now uh, who continue to make a really great wealth of resources freely available to everybody to uh, you know benefit from. Um, of course, <clears throat> the very source of our community and um, from uh, you know that all this goodness really flows from, uh, I believe, and continues to do so is really the immense merit and you know. Uh, amazing amount of significant work that Venerable Yutamo has given us as, I feel, a gift, which we are very lucky uh, to really be a part of and benefit benefited from. So, Sadhu Bhante and, um, uh, again, uh, great that we have completed 10 years uh, as an organization. Right. Um, so now, uh, in this uh, AGM, uh, we will briefly 
uh, go through an overview of our financial situation. Um, then touch briefly uh, upon all the areas that we work upon as an organization. Uh, there are customary things that need to be done, like nominate uh, our board of directors. Um, and uh, we'd also talk a little bit about our new center, which we've moved into last year. Um, uh, we invite Venable to Damo to share his views and guidance for our community as we go ahead. And um, maybe then open it up for questions and everyone's comments. Uh, so just before we get into all that, uh, I'd also like to just finish another customary requirement, which is essentially to name uh, another charity organization, which is registered in, you know, a registered charity organization of our choice, uh, essentially recommending uh, that should something happen to our organization where we, uh, you know, have to wind up in an unplanned way that they receive our funds. So. Um, um, now, every year we have uh, kept and we can continue this choice uh, for inheritance to be what for what uh, for home, uh, which is basically a Buddhist monastery and temple in Stony Creek. And uh, since we're talking about them, I'd also like to take the opportunity to really thank them because during the last year in between shifting centers and residences, we um, operated from their uh, premises and Venerable Ritudamo even resided in their monastery um, and we operated um, as in we had residential meditators, uh, you know, uh, doing courses from their, uh, from their uh, premises. So um, much gratitude to the head monk Venerable Damo and everyone there for making uh, this possible. Um, so, with that being done, we can proceed with uh, the next part, which is basically I invite Adder to give an overview of our financial situation for the past year or so. Uh, over to you, Adder. Okay, thank you, Austin. <clears throat> uh, I'm Adder, I'm the, the treasurer of Sira Mangalo. Uh, 2022 was definitely a time of transition for Sira Mangalo International. We began the year operating low capacity live retreats out of Wat Khmer Krom in Hamilton. We did a group retreat in Florida. We ran a temporary center in Kitchener, all before moving to our new full function meditation center in Kitchener, which, um, as Austin mentioned, we'll be hearing more about today. I'm happy to say that throughout these transitions and an increase in on live online and live courses, and a growth in local outreach events. The finances of Sierra Mangalo International have remained strong. We're able to support Venerable Yutadamo as well as our growing group of lay teachers to continue with the tradition begun millennia ago by the Buddha, uh, to teach the Dhamma completely free of charge, supported fully by the generosity of others. So I posted in the Discord channel, the annual general meeting channel, the text channel here, our uh, 2022 preliminary income statement and end of year balance sheet, as well as our ongoing fund tracker. Um, in 2022, our total income was $68,000 Canadian with expenses at $57,000, meaning we operated at a comfortable surplus of about $11,000. As usual, food and rent are among our highest expense areas, though rent was smaller because we were only renting a property for an interim period. We also have a large expense from our Deer Haven retreat in January, and the entire cost of that was almost perfectly matched by the donations we received for that event. And notably, we concluded the Meditation Center fundraiser in 2022. In total, we raised over $127,000 in donations before uh, closing the fundraiser. As you may know, Jeff, one of our directors and the center caretaker, was able to act as benefactor by purchasing a property to serve as our meditation center and offering its use free of charge. Thus, we were able to call the campaign a success 
and move into the new home of Sarah Mangalo International. We know that all of you who have donated to the fundraiser are eager to see that generosity put to use, and we're still finalizing a formal lease that legally guarantees our long-term stay and eventual transfer of the property to the organization. Uh, so the donations have not been used until we finalize that. And once such formalities are finalized, Sierra Mangala will put those funds towards the continued establishment and growth of the center. I mentioned at the start uh, that these financial documents are preliminary. We The numbers may change as we finalize our books and, and account for uh, this donation in kind of the lease of the new center. As always, I am awed by the generosity of the community. Our continued financial stability is a testament to, to this generosity. I've uh, served on the board of directors and as treasurer of Sierra Mangalo International for four wonderful years. And this year I'm stepping down from these positions. I'm not seeking renomination for the coming year. I'm filled with gratitude toward the community, toward my fellow directors, and of course, my life-changing teacher, Venerable Yudadamo Biku. The gift of Dhamma is the greatest gift I've ever received, and I'm honored to have had the opportunity to help share such a priceless treasure with the world. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu. Okay. That's it for the, the treasurer's report. Um, and I, I can answer questions um, if you're looking over the documents. I, I don't know if we want to wait till the uh, the end of the meeting or, or whatever is appropriate. Thank you, Adri. Um, yeah, we could possibly do the questions uh, at the end. Maybe that also gives time for people to uh, see anything that they would like to. Um, I just briefly mention, uh, uh, you know, uh, just the overwhelming work that Adri has done. Uh, Adri has been our treasurer and board member over the last four years, like you mentioned. Um, I mean, he's he's greatly improved the management of finances I believe, over the years. Uh, but I also think that really his clarity of thought and effective communication and uh, diligence in execution have really made our financial systems better, but also really contributed in making our organization better in very many ways. I think uh, some of us remember uh, his contributions in the Dear Haven Retreat and Destroy the Reorganization, which possibly are some examples of the front ending contributions. But uh, there's also a lot of behind the scenes work that, that he's contributed to. Uh, I mean, doing all the financial heavy work is, is one such example, but uh, we've benefited from much from you know his decision making and clarity of thought, like I was saying. So, uh, it's it's been a real joy to have someone like Adder on our board, and um, it's uh, you know thank you for uh, you know your really uh, unique contributions, Adder, and I, I do believe that the good work you've done has benefited many, but it will also benefit you hopefully in in your journey ahead. So Sadhu and thank you for all your contributions. Right, um, well. The next thing is about nominating the board, and our our current board, with the ex exception of Adder, is up for the renomination. Um, and you know, Adder has been the treasurer. Ideally, we would um, uh, prefer you know someone uh, who is uh, based more locally, so that uh, you know, doing the paperwork and things like that are just more easier. But till we perhaps find someone like that, I volunteered to, you know, fill in the treasurer role as well. And so, okay, let's um, table this agenda item, um, which is the renomination of the current board of directors. 
Uh, so that's namely um, Venerable Damo as president, uh, directors Jeff Edit Chris, and now treasurer and secretary for myself, uh, Austin. Yeah. So if there's no objection uh, and with everyone's permission, I can take this agenda point as fast as well. Right. Um, I thought also it is perhaps beneficial, especially for any new members, but uh, seeing that mostly people who have uh, been around are here and we've been not many so many um, places, but uh, perhaps it's beneficial also to remind ourselves and even me uh, of all the areas of work that our volunteers do in in so many in so many ways that and the resources that are made available to us that we that we use constantly. So I'll just briefly overview all the areas of work that our organization on a routine basis has have been doing has been doing over the last over the last year. Um, so I think. Uh, everyone might agree that the core of of our contribution or offering is our residential meditation course, um, which uh, you know it's the foundation and advanced courses that we do at our center and um, under the guidance of wherever we do more think multiple meditators have benefited over the last over the last year, um, and and that of course is 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 the very core of what we do. Uh, our new center now allows for, I think, four meditators to be housed along with the steward at, at, at a time. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the new center in some time. Um, so supplementary to the um, to the residential course is our online or at-home meditation course, where um, people can uh, select a slot um, and meet with the teacher once a week. Um, and under the guidance of a teacher do a meditation course at their home. Now, currently we have expanded in the year to have three teachers uh, available to pick slots from uh, in a week. And so uh, if you count all of them, we have basically about 65 slots available across three teachers in a, in a week now. Uh, we basically mean 65 people can do a course simultaneously in a week. And I think that's a significant a uh, significant number of meditators that uh, we can potentially benefit in a week if everybody, if, if people sign up. So uh, that's another great resource that's out there. Um, I'd also mention that uh, Venerable Dhammo uh, has been giving Dhamma talks, uh, you know, uh, there are about maybe, I don't know now, 2,000 Dhamma talks in, on YouTube. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, also, there is hosting of weekly Q and A sessions with the help of a host, uh, you know, uh, a whole team of people that help him post uh, where he answers questions and uh, uh, guides people on meditation as well. So that's a weekly uh, resource. Um, and talking about uh, dhamma, uh, uh, dhamma talks and, and dhamma resources. Uh, I'd also like to mention about the, I think Kante also mentioned it in his uh, uh, Q&A session yesterday about the audio library and podcast uh, resource, which I think our, our volunteers have really done a great job in putting together. It's an organized collection of various Dhamma uh, resources, like for example, just to give some numbers, it, there's about 850 questions uh, that one can you know search from and uh, search answers from uh, which are very easy to find uh, so so that's like 850 you know questions that have already been asked and people can search uh, for uh, their answers from there uh, there's about uh, 200 Dhammapada episodes I know people are interested in sometimes interested in Dhammapada, Dhammapada series it's arranged uh, very well over there uh, there's uh, 600 Dhamma and Sutta talks uh, available um, topic-wise. So, you know, if you're interested in a particular topic, it, you know, you can uh, access that very easily uh, by searching for it and then listening to that talk. 
Uh, there's also recordings of past study groups, uh, like the Siddhi Maga and the Jataka Tales, etc. So I just thought of calling that resource out with our, our volunteers have organized and put together. Uh, I think that's a pretty valuable resource as well. Um, so um, at, at this point, I'd also like to invite, um, you know, Edit and Chris, if they would like to touch upon some more projects uh, and resources that our volunteers have been working on and making available uh, to everyone. So if you'd like to add something, perhaps, to edit, uh, okay. Yes. So, um, it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to our on annual general meeting today. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to um, update you on the progress we have made over the past year, um, particularly in our various projects and uh, initiatives with our volunteers behind the scene. Um, firstly, uh, I'm happy to announce uh, that we have successfully released our uh, meditation Q&A uh, booklet last year, um, which answers frequently asked questions related to our meditation technique and practice. Uh, this has been a project that has been in the works for some time, and um, we are really happy with the result. Um, in, in addition, uh, right now in the group project, um, uh, our volunteers are working on the Dhammapada series. Uh, the first chapter is ready uh, and uh, will be re released shortly. Um, we also re um, we also received the uh, translations for the Ask a Monk series morality booklet uh, to Spanish language from Ricardo last year. Um, I, I would like to um, thank uh, every volunteer who participated on the book project. Um, furthermore, we also organized the recordings uh, for our, our meditation Q&A book. Uh, and uh, um, we also received uh, two recordings uh, for the How to Meditate booklet in Sinhala and German. Um, and I uh, want to thank especially to Chia for running this uh, project, the recordings. Uh, she also uh, was in charge uh, with the recordings uh, to different other books from y Venerable Yutadamu Bishko. So I'm not sure of the state of the uh, uh, how ready they are right now, but everything that has been recorded is on uh, the our audio library uh, right now. In form and also in form of podcasts. Our website has undergone a significant overhaul, uh, led by Matthew, who generously uh, purchased the WordPress theme as a gift to our organization. Uh, we have built a new look for our website, which has an easier administrator platform to navigate. Um, and uh, we try to make sure that the information is uh, easy to uh, read on the website. I'm also uh, incredibly grateful to Matthew uh, for his hard work and dedication to this project. Um, and uh, our other volunteers too on, on the website project. Um, 
Yeah, also, uh, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the wonderful volunteers who ha I have worked uh, throughout the year. Um, it's either on translation or IT support. First one is Sebastian, who has been instrumental in, uh, in managing the meditation app or audio library, of course, it's all on him and our server uploads. Um, I'm very grateful uh, because he responds very quickly uh, and everything is done in a moment. Um, I, I want to thank uh, Julie um, because uh, she helped a lot um, he, um, in creating the meditation uh, meditators questionnaire the he helped she helped with the what to expect information about uh, in-person courses and she also uh, created the how to meditate video for youtube um i would also like to mention uh, sanda who uh, recently had the initiative to translate the um, how to meditate booklet uh, to Romanian and they also created an audio version for it. Uh, I would also like to mention Mila who um, she has also been uh, an integral part of our team. She also translated the booklet uh, into Ukrainian uh, uh, and uh, she usually prints them out and um, um, give give uh, give them out um, where she teaches. Um, and and she al she's also teaching basic meditation uh, according to our booklet at the Ukrainian house uh, and on and online at uh, Ukrainian English school. I also would like to extend my thanks to everyone who attends the study group uh, every Saturday um, for reading the suttas and for asking questions. Um, it is through your participation that we continue to grow and learn as a community. I am grateful for your dedication and commitment to our organization. Um, lastly, I want to express my appreciation to my students for trusting my guidance in the Atom Meditation course. Um, it is a privilege to be able to share this practice with others. Uh, and I'm honored to have been given the opportunity um, to do this. In conclusion, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for your support and uh, dedication to Sri Mangalo International Meditation Site. It is uh, through your efforts that we continue to grow and make a positive impact on the world. Thank you. So. Um. Thank you, Edit. Uh, in fact, you've you've thanked everyone. I think I would thank and more. Um, let's see if I can do a decent job here. I'm Chris. I've also been a director at Syria Mongolo for the past four years. Joined at the same time as Adder. I mostly focus on the technology side of things, which means that the projects that I have involvement in are fairly invisible to us all but I thought I would give a couple of brief statistics of where we stand right now from the technology side, the, the side that allows us to be truly international. Venerable Yutadamo's YouTube channel currently has over 105,000 subscriptions on YouTube, which is pretty significant reach for a channel that uh, doesn't strive to take in any money, do any advertising or anything like that, do anything sensational. Simple videos about once a week, usually with not much to see. Still draws uh, over 70 live viewers per session. 
and averages about 3,000 views per video that we create. We communicate here on Discord, which is a service that's freely available, but not exactly aligned to a meditation community, so we adapt it where we can. We get 180 new visitors to our Discord server every single week, and about 90 of those remain members of our community. So I think we're growing at a, a pretty significant clip, and it's wonderful to see uh, all of the productive and helpful conversation that takes place. That's impossible to keep a community of our size uh, operating peacefully without a bit of moderation, and so I have people to thank for that. Our volunteers, Aurora and Rahid, uh, did some very noble work helping to keep people friendly when they otherwise might not have been, and to help bring things to higher attention that needed uh, deliberate action. Thank you for that. It helps to make this place uh, a place worth seeing every day. I also want to uh, give a special thanks to Sebastian, who uh, carries our world on his shoulders, as it were. Uh, I couldn't begin to enumerate every task that he does for our organization, but some of the ways that I interact with him pretty frequently are to uh, maintain the infrastructure of our community, uh, which he has helped us to upgrade to a zero downtime configuration. We recently had uh, our vendor do an upgrade that no one in our community would have noticed, and that's exactly what we like. So if the website's ever up, I think you have him to thank. I'd also like to thank those who helped me produce uh, the technical side of the weekly broadcasts. Venerable Yutadamo provides his wisdom and his voice for that. But people might not uh, re realize that there's chat moderation that takes place there too. And there's quite a bit of work uh, establishing the questions that are to be asked of the Venerable. And so I want to thank, uh, again, Rahid, also uh, Jim, and also Edit. Thanks very much for your help in making those go uh, as well as they do. I'd also like to thank our directors, um, the members of our community that I interact with the most frequently. Uh, Jeff, Edit, Austin, Adder, Venerable Yutadamo. Thank you all for being Dhamma friends. And thank you to everyone in this community, everyone that this uh, recording reaches, for being Dhamma friends. May you all be happy. Sadhu. Sadhu. Uh, thank you, yes, that was so beautifully said. Um, yeah, um, I I could just call out a few other things that come to mind, um, although I'm not like, exceptionally good with remembering everyone's uh, particular, uh, I mean, at risk uh, missing out on, on, on some people uh, in, a, in a particular task. Like, uh, well, um, for example, even if, if, as far as the How to Meditate booklet is concerned, I think, uh, which is now available, in about 25 languages in text and seven audio languages. Uh, that's significant work that's happened there um, to a lot of people. Um, and one can also request for a free hard copy to, to be delivered at their, at their houses. Uh, and uh, I do know that Aurora does uh, all of the uh, sending of these books. I think uh, to put it in numbers, I think last year, there were about 100 books uh, sent out, and overall, it's been about 500 odd books that uh, have been sent. So um, that's that's awesome. 
Um, we also started another program recently, which is the mentor program, uh, which is a, a group that meets monthly and uh, you know uh, talks about building ways to share meditation practice in one's local communities. Um, I wonder if 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 would like to talk anything about it. I mean, if, if I'm putting it on the spot, then maybe not. But if you'd like to share anything um, uh, about the mental program, perhaps, you think? Yeah. Sorry, was that directed at me? <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, um, I, well, I just thought that maybe uh, you know more about, uh, you know, the mentor program uh, than sure. I do. Uh, I, I could talk about it, but I thought... If, no, no, if you'd that's like fine. To I just, I didn't, I didn't, I can barely understand you. Uh, there's uh -huh. pretty, a lot of interference when you're, when you speak, so I wasn't sure if it was directed at me. Yes, I can definitely talk about the mentorship program, um, the mentor program. Um, it's uh, it's been lovely to meet everybody once a week to go over ideas and um, answer questions and um, uh, regarding trying to set up um, a meditation group within their one's local community. Um, it's been quite eye opening actually uh, to see uh, people um, think outside of the box and uh, use resources, whether it be online or in, you know, in real life, whether it be finding community centers or other Buddhist communities and, and um, creating a space within those organizations. I think that's been really inspiring. Um, there, I don't know, there's, there's much to talk about, uh, but what I would like to see is um, uh, something soon is maybe a directory of um, the different groups that are currently taking place. Um, I know there's several people who have um, started their groups within their communities, and that's wonderful to see. Um, but having a directory of where those places are would be I think, beneficial. Um, also, I think in the future, um, we could have more sort of PDFs or resources to help um, uh, facilitate these initial interactions with people who might be interested in meditation with those groups. Um, I know some of the some of these uh, self starters have been doing them on their own, and uh, while great as they are, there a lot of times I feel like um, uh, you know maybe they have a lot of questions and need more support. Maybe uh, having a like a, like a template or something that we can provide um, with all the information would be very useful. And um, yeah, it's continuing to go, it's continuing to go strong. And um, I invite and encourage any, everyone to, who wants to lead a group or to start a group in your area to come and join us um, on the first Sunday of every month. Of course, not this Sunday because uh, we're doing this now, but uh, the next one will be next week uh, at the same time, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and Toronto Time. And um, sometimes people just sit and listen and get inspiration and ideas. And uh, some other times, you know, we have lots of other things to share that's going on. So that's, uh, I want to thank everyone who's been participating and listening um, after the fact as well. I know sometimes... Uh, People listen just to the recordings because they can't make the live. Um, but I appreciate everyone for um, uh, you know, uh, their efforts in spreading the, the Dhamma and spreading this meditation practice, this technique specifically. So thank you. So I do. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah. I would also like to say that there is, you know, uh, background support systems that happen, I, I mean, that are at play, like, for example, um, 
Sacha has been managing our email and uh, replying to a lot of email um, over over many many years. So uh, you know there are probably other people like her that may or may not uh, I, I may or may not be able to remember and, and call out now. But um, it's it's really a community of of volunteers that uh, have have been doing everything that needs to be done. And so I would like to thank everyone for that. Um, right. So that's, um, and I think, a fair overview of uh, the work that our organization does. And uh, I'd also now like to move to talk a little bit about our new center, which uh, we moved into uh, sometime in the middle of last year. And uh, this is essentially a place that uh, Jeff has converted after some massive amount of reconstruction of the property uh, to kind of make it a viable um, place that we can call a meditation center and basically including things like, you know, a Dhamma hall and um, residence for Vanakumi to Dhamma and a space that can house four meditators and a steward, of, you know, uh, can take care of the meditators. Uh, food and, and all of that. So again, it, I mean, I uh, would like to um, perhaps uh, call on Jeff again uh, because he might be uh, in a position better to explain all of the work that's happened in the in the center. If you'd like to share for everyone's benefit, um, and and in general, uh, perhaps touch upon a little bit more on the center than maybe even I might be aware of. If you'd like to share, Jeff. Yeah, sure, of course. Thank you, Austin. Um, yeah, it's been quite a journey um, bringing this all together. It's been a lot of um, obstacles. Uh, Mara's been around several times and um, trying to throw kinks in the works, but uh, we are pulling through and with um, the, you know, with the guidance of the, the board and Utadamo, we've um, we, we finally feel like we've made it here. And um, I'm here sitting now in the in our new Dhamma hall, and it's 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 quite special. And um, it is, I would say, 99% complete. I'm looking at a couple of areas that still need to be finished, but um, the stage behind me is done. We're looking to get a big Buddha statue. Um, and uh, we've already been hosting events here. And um, it's, it's been wonderful to have a location that um, is somewhat more central, I think. Um, just last week, we had someone random knock on the front door of the meditation center and i was like hello and they're like yes uh, is this a meditation center and i said yes are you buddhist and they're like no i'm like that's okay you don't have to be buddhist i said do you practice meditation and they're like well we yes but we would like to know more and i said okay come on in <laughs> so they sat in the living room and i kind of shared with them you know, what we do here, the at-home course, um, the meditation retreats, and um, and I even came back here to show them the Dhamma Hall and explain that we have a resident monk as our teacher, which we're very, very grateful for. Not very many centers that I can think of, meditation centers, have a resident monk as their teacher. A lot of times they're recordings of, or such, and they're mostly run by lay people. But to have one to hear is, is very, very special. And they were pretty impressed by that fact. And I handed out booklets, and they're really keen on, on participating. They also live within walking distance, two minutes away. They found us on Google. So, um, it, you know, what our, our search engine optimization is working well, I guess, because uh, if you type in meditation center kitchen and we come up. <laughs> And actually, if you if you Google the address, it comes up Sierra Mongolia International, which is also pretty special. 
Um, and that's just one example. Uh, you know, there's been other people who've just been kind of knocking on our doors and calling and finding out. And these are all local people. They're finding us. They live in Kitchener. They're then. A uh, few of them have been coming, actually, just two days ago, a, a student from one of the universities here in town found us and has been following you to Damo for the past uh, couple of months. And yes, on Friday, she came for her first food dana, um, offering uh, food for Bante and the, med and the, and the center. And um, she's so new and she's you know only 22 years old, but it was just so nice to see someone who's young and um, eager to learn about the practice. And, uh, because she's a student, she doesn't have a lot of time to devote, but uh, she wanted to learn more about Buddhism and, and just be, and just to give, which I think is just fantastic. Um, last week or two weeks ago, we had our first sort of big event here in, our, in the Dhamma Hall where um, it was one of our, one of the supporters. So since we've come, since actually we've been here, there've been lots of, well, first my concern was, okay, I don't really know Kitchener. <laughs> we don't really know very, very many people here. And to set up a center in Kitchener was kind of like, okay, um, are we going to be able to, you know, have a Sangha, have a community, have a local community? I don't, you know, um, and over uh, as soon as we 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 arrived um almost immediately people just started showing up all these uh, thai people uh lay people who are connected with other buddhist um temples in the area which i didn't even know existed um they've been bringing their monks and um over as well so at one point we had like five six monks here um uh, blessing the, the blessing the property and um and all of their supporters and, and lay people coming to bring all this food and 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 to offer food dana it's been wonderful to see i've made so many so many friends that are now my buddhist friends uh, and i see them regularly whether it be weekly or bi-weekly um and so, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, they, they had a big event here. There was about 25 people. Um, uh, they all brought food. It was a huge spread just for, just for Bunte. I remember when Bunte was sitting behind me on the stage here, he looked up and he was like, oh, that's a lot of food for one monk. Um, all this was for him, and it was quite special. Um, and then he did a, a Dhamma talk and... Um, about the importance of practice, because a lot of these uh, local uh, people, they're not, um, not yet anyway, meditators. Um, they are rooted more in tradition and rituals, which um, we don't typically do here at our center, but I do feel like it does bring people together. And we have converted some of them to start taking the at-home course and interested in taking um you know reading our booklet and whatnot so uh, a lot of them are slowly coming around and that kind of gave me the idea to host these <clears throat> type of events on a monthly basis um dana sila bawana type of events where um the first half part we do giving giving food giving dana um, the second part is a Dhamma talk, and the third part is a meditation practice. Um, so it'll be an all day from like 10 to 3 type of event. Um, I wouldn't say it's all day, but it's a, a big part of the day. And um, what I understand is if, uh, if the community is uh, requesting it, then they will always oblige. So it's up to me to sort of organize these events and bring people to excuse me, bring people together and then ask Bunde for a teaching. And, um, and so the local support has been just wonderful. Building this um, center has been challenging and I want to thank some of the volunteers that have been coming forth and putting in their hard work, people like Dalawa, who was here as a steward for six months and also doing whatever he can, whenever he can, uh, with the skill sets that he has. and you know, everything from painting to um, <laughs> pulling nails out of the floor uh, on his hands and knees and 
Um, same with Partha, who's who just recently left our center. He was a, also a steward here. And uh, um, also some local volunteers who just want to come and help. Um, and and so that's been really wonderful. So I want to thank them um, thank them for their uh, for their hard work. Um, so um, that's I don't know how uh, what else to say. Um, that's basically our center. Uh, the the main house is is quite lovely, and um, it's a. Uh, it's um, we have our regular schedule, you know, with uh, our food, our breakfast, and our lunch. And Bunte comes to the house with his bowl for for food alms, which is always so special. And uh, and every week um, we have two or three, sometimes four, sometimes maybe three, three, you know, three to four people, groups of people coming on different days to offer food dana, which has been really really great to see as well. And. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you want a tour or something? Like, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that was very nice to hear, Jeff. Uh, it's 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 very nice to hear someone from the ground um, give all that information, and it's wonderful well, one that of it's the, all coming together. Yeah, one of the things is, um, you know, we do have a Facebook page. Um, Sri Mongol International, and from time to time, I'll post and share some of the pics from the events um, that we have here. Oh, speaking of events, actually, I should mention um, that next week, April 9th, is actually the two year anniversary of my the passing of my partner. And um, and this hall is dedicated to his memory and in honor of him, because if it, it none of this would be possible would be possible um, without his hard work and um, contribution to the world. And so next week we are. I'm going to be hosting uh, our first um, Dana Sila Bawana, and um, I was. I'm planning on inviting like lots of different, lots of monks from different uh, temples in the area, um, lots of our local supporters coming out to give Dana, having them, inviting them to stay for a meditation session. Um, so it'll be our first um, uh, event um, uh, where it's uh, where it's a longer event, and uh, this will probably be our bigger, the, our biggest event um, so far. Um, so far, our our first really big event was our katina, which was our robe offering back in October, and that was very special. That was done in the house. There was so much activity um, and lots of people, and it was just such a beautiful, wonderful day. And uh, so I look forward to having, hosting these events and gathering people together and um, spreading the, the teachings of the Buddha and um, hopefully um, encouraging them to meditate and uh, in, our, in our tradition, of course. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of good happening. Well, I think that, uh, well, uh, that fairly covers an overview of. Uh, oh, actually, the there's one last thing. Sorry, I want to also mm -hmm. thank um, uh, not just the local volunteers, but also the volunteers outside of um, our, our, our area, people like. Um, Julie, who's been sending supplies, <laughs> she messages me, is there anything you need? I'm like, well, I need, you know, honey or oatmeal, and she'll actually send it to me, I think. so. And there's a few people who have been doing that. Uh, some of them are local and some of them are not, but uh, thank you for uh, supporting the center with um, uh, necessities and supplies. 
So Sadhu. Sadhu. Well, um, I'd like to think that I've saved the best for last, and I'd like to now request and invite uh, Venerable Yutadamo if he may share his guidance or comments on the year gone by and, and views uh, for our community as we move forward from here. So, Vandri, uh, if you will, please. Well, thank you, everyone. Those who have spoken have done a great job in mentioning and even reminding me of some of the things that I wasn't even aware of were going on behind the scenes. And so, of course, I will join in expressing my appreciation for everyone. Expressing appreciation itself is a is a good deed, so appreciate that everyone is so appreciative of each other as well. It speaks to the harmony and the, the clarity that people have as a result of their practice to be able to recognize the goodness and to see the goodness in each other. And ultimately, it comes down to, to goodness that all of the good deeds that everyone has done haven't haven't essentially and primarily been for other people. They have been for the, the goodness of of one's own mind and for the support of one's own practice. This is the Buddhist way of relating to goodness. Goodness is another word for happiness. And goodness is the purification of the mind. So that which purifies you is goodness. It's not goodness, the deed itself. The goodness is in the quality of the mind as you do the deed. So, of course, some of the, the most profound goodness comes when you're walking back and forth or sitting still with your eyes closed. Because ultimately that's what's most important, is the effect that it has on your mind, and freeing you from greed, freeing you from anger, freeing you from delusion. So this meeting, I mean, remarkably, I think remarkably and, and powerfully, and this isn't just rhetoric, this is actually, I think, uh, the the mean the words people's words and and the truth of their words attests to the fact that this is a powerful example of the goodness uh, of the organization and the goodness of of all the things that we do. Another important aspect of having an organization besides supporting our own individual practice is the continuation of Buddha Sasana, which is of interest and concern to all of us. Inevitably, Buddhism is not going to last forever. But how long it lasts and in what form it lasts is, of course, dependent on the act activities and attitudes of all of us, of the of Buddhists. And, and we, this community, remarkably has become a part of that, has arisen like a lotus flower, bloomed something new that wasn't there before, something that has really and substantially in some small way contributed to the field of flowers that is Buddhism has added some value and some support or another beam you might say in the many beams that support and keep Buddhism uh, I'll keep Buddhism erect or, or active 
in existence. So I thought I would touch upon something that is kind of a reminder of many of the qualities that we share and we contribute to uh, as, as a means of supporting the continuation of the Buddha's teaching. This is a, a teaching that the Buddha gave when he was asked about, um, well, he was asked a question that prompted him to consider the stability and the strength of a of a body of of organization and caused him to extrapolate and 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 apply these ideas to to buddhist practitioners how will buddhism continue in the world what what is it that's going to lead to its decline and what will prevent its decline and he gave seven key points that i think have a lot um, of of significance for our organization. The first is community, and so uh, most well in our organization we have an interesting dichotomy that I think we have to highlight and 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 keep in mind that sometimes um, it's easy to. see one side of the organization more clearly than the other side. But our organization, as we can tell, tell from this meeting, has two distinct uh, sides to it. One is the international online uh, activities, and the other is the local activities, which, as we hear, there, there is... Um, you can you can tell there is a little bit of disconnect, not in a bad way, but um, just in a functional way. That's some. It's like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So many of the activities that are local are not even seen um, or or heard about by the international community, and vice versa. Many of the locals here don't aren't, don't even realize that we have an online community or a. Uh, a study group or that sort of thing, or the online broadcast to that. Of course, m many of the people here are aware of both sides, but it's worth highlighting that we, and remembering that we do have two parts. So our community is uh, somewhat uh, multifold or multi multifaceted, two-faceted. We have two main parts, but both sides. And ultimately our community as a whole. The Buddha reminded us this, this idea of having community, of meeting, in, in, uh, meeting often and having a connection with each other. I think this meeting shows there is benefit that when we have a, uh, a reason to meet, and of course all the many reasons that we meet online, and the events that we have here where the local community meets are some of the, the some of the best things that we can do to keep the organization uh, growing and, and strong and to support the individuals who come to us for refuge and for 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 gaining the benefit of our services. It gives people confidence, it reminds each of us, of why we're here. It provides uh, support and examples as we um, see and, and appreciate the examples that people set and the good work that they do. The second quality is harmony which of course relates to community, that not only do we meet, but we meet in harmony. And of course, a community is always going to have challenges 
and even disagreements, arguments. Um, there will be cause to criticize each other and uh, cause to disagree. And I think it's it's I think where we are, we do well as an organization not to prevent disagreements or arguments or tempers even from flaring up, but in resolving and in moving to a point where we focus on appreciating the good. Remember the Buddha was, it was one of the, I think, the few examples where the Buddha did push positive positivity. You know, usually in Buddhism, well, people often accuse us of being negative and focusing on suffering and the problems, but I think in general the Buddha was very neutral, objective, pointing out the good, pointing out the bad. But in regards to people, it appears to be, and, and reasonably so, seems like the best course of action was very much focused on the good in people. And he said that if you come across, if a monk comes across a soiled piece of cloth, those monks are always uh, intend or, or encouraged to try to find rags to make robes. If part of the rag is soiled and is rotten and, and, and useless, that you should tear that part off. Don't pay attention to it. Just tear it off and throw it away. Don't pay it any mind. And the Buddha used this as an example for human beings and examples like this where he said that we should focus on seeing the good in people. It's far more valuable and, and far more more um, productive. To, so we're always going to have disagreements, especially as an organization that is international. And international is not a word to be taken lightly. It means that cultures are going to be often so vastly different, not to mention people's individual experiences and, and uh, backgrounds. Personalities are always going to clash. Furthermore, nobody's getting paid to be here. So no one has an, an ex ulterior motive, not like a corporation where you may hate your co-workers, but you're getting paid and in the end you can go home. That's not how this works. People are here because of their uh, interest and their desire to get involved, their their appreciation and um, inclination, and so we're much more susceptible to being uh, disheartened and discouraged, and people do end up leaving. This happens, so. We're, we're always going to have these challenges where people don't get along or where tempers flare up, where the bad side of each of us shows its, itself. And I would, this, is, this one is, of course, very important as a result because people do leave and will just disappear and, and we might say lose the benefit of any good that might come from being involved with the organization. So. Always, always, always we have to, and we do, I think, um, try our best to focus on the good in each other. And that's harmony. That's, of course, very important. The third is integrity. And this is something that we always have to be vigilant about. It's not enough for us to have an organization to be harmonious, to be happy together, to be doing work. Uh, if If we don't have a guiding principle or guiding principles and, and and more importantly if our guiding principles are not in line explicit like uh, completely in line with the buddha's teaching then then it's actually uh, an it's a it's a problem our organization ceases to be beneficial at all so integrity not 
um, adding new practices that are in contradiction to the Buddha's teaching and not forgetting or neglecting teachings that are essential to the Buddha's teaching. This is, of course, uh, an intrinsic and, and essential part of what we do. And this often comes up and we, we struggle, I struggle to find a happy medium between allowing questioning and disagreement to, to um, kind of uh, preventing wrong views from cropping up or, or uh, misunderstandings of the Dhamma from taking hold. And this is a challenge because, of course, what is the Buddha's teaching um, depends on, on who you ask. And so we as an organization, my, my um, stance is that we follow the orthodox Theravada because this is the stance that my teacher took, this is the stance that his teachers took, and I'm fairly confident in their wisdom, to say the least, to put it mildly, and don't feel the need to question or to be too critical of some of the things that I might not understand or maybe even I'm not sure uh, how how they can be true or that sort of thing, that I mostly would ask that we try to stick to the ancient ways. And that sometimes causes friction and causes problems, and I apologize for those people who have been maybe felt slighted or dismissed who were questioning of those things, but it often is a, a bit of a distraction for us to get too deep in the thicket or deep in the weeds, as they say, uh, in discussing the finer points of is this true or is, did that happen or that sort of thing. And, and we should, of course, always focus on the much more essential topics. So um, I would take that opportunity to just sort of reiterate and remind everyone that that's where I stand, and I think that's where the organization stands, as that we are an orthodox Theravada organization that accepts the Buddha's teaching as found in the Pali Tipitaka, that accepts uh, on a basic premise the commentaries to that teaching, including the Visuddhimagga, and even appreciates and, and generally accepts the sub-commentaries, all of which um, provide, I would say, profound and, and um, irreplaceable support in understanding and elucidating some of the harder-to-understand teachings of the Buddha. So integrity, it's a long way of saying that uh, I think this is where integrity lasts, that we stick to this, that we don't throw out any of these hard, hard, this hard, hard work that went into writing the Visuddhimagga or the commentaries or the Abhidhamma, that these are all part of, of our Buddhism. And we're not going to compromise our integrity by questioning them beyond what is, what is uh, respectful. So, integrity, that's another one. The fourth one is humility. Humility, I think we're pretty good at. I don't think anyone's very proud. We do sometimes have this issue, um, and, and I would like to bring it up because we have many people who have taken teacher training and are interested in taking teacher training. I think we've done quite well. As I don't have any real concerns, but it's always something we have to keep in mind when you begin to train as a teacher, ego, if it exists in you, inevitably begins to surface and challenge you um, because you are being praised, because you are being thanked, because you're being listened to, and you're being taken, being taken seriously. So anyone who is interested in being a teacher, humility should be their most... Um, important goal, the most important thing in their mind is to stay humble. Well, besides, of course, teaching the right thing and being a good teacher. 
but humility because humility is always going to be the hardest one as we teach others and of course just in general being humble and um something that is sort of technical but worth keeping in mind is this appreciation of experience this appreciation of seniority um it it, it works on two levels of course it works firstly on the level of uh, overriding any sense that I'm better than you or I know better than you because um, seniority of course has nothing to do with that someone can have been say with this organization for 10 years 20 years and still not have 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 gotten very far and a person might come new and and have gotten gotten much better results than them but by removing those uh, judgments from the equation, we free ourselves from, from often uh, sort of the pride and conceit that can arise when we think, I know better than you, L listen to me, let me, put me in charge. When we go by seniority, which is what monks do, of course, strictly by seniority, we remove all that. So a monk might be senior and I bow down to him, but I know that that has nothing to do with our value as human beings, and so does he. And because we, we respect each other in that way, we, we are able to let go, to some extent, our conceit and our feeling of being better than that person. Well, because they are better than me simply because of having more years, more, more days as a monk. So uh, on one level, we should uh, always keep in mind people's seniority and and respect and appreciate the, the time that they have put in. But of course, more importantly, seniority means experience. So we should listen to those people who have been doing this for longer, who have been Buddhists perhaps for longer. And um, we should uh, respect, of course, the good things that they have done and appreciate, as, as many of you have today, the good that people have done in the many years that this organization has been in uh, in existence now many of you might not be aware that actually we are older than 10 years so technically austin didn't get it wrong with this is 10 years i guess i didn't wasn't counting but our organization has actually existed in 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 at least in some form for several years before that we started in california actually as an american nonprofit. we were registered as a as a 501c3 in california for several years and there are all the volunteers who have long since moved on though i'm still somewhat in contact with them so uh yeah well, I'll, I'll just to say that uh, we we appreciate the good things that everyone has done and has done to keep this organization going and to keep buddhism going and of course appreciating the Teachers, so the the teachers of the commentaries and the sub commentaries and the Visuddhimagga, and of course the teachers who passed along the Buddha's teaching in the Tipitaka and put it together in that form, and of course the Buddha, we respect and are humble in their presence. Their teachings still here to be passed on. The fifth quality is purity. And so this speaks more to our own individual contribution and our own individual uh, success. It relates to our own qualities of mind. So purity means, of course, in relation to greed, anger, and delusion, the three unwholesome roots, that ultimately none of this has any meaning in, if, unless we are purifying our minds from these three things, working to overcome them. Ultimately, it doesn't matter what someone else is doing or how the organization is doing. You wouldn't ever benefit from worrying or, or fretting about whether the organization is going to survive or whether Buddhism is going to survive. Buddhism only survives because of the purity, only because of the purity. Nothing else is anywhere near as important. So ultimately, if you're going to be concerned about the longevity of the Buddhist teaching, or the organization, or anything, uh, your own purity is where you should be striving first and foremost. And that's, of course, why our focus is always going to be 
uh, above everything else on the practice of the four satipatthana, we're cultivating vipassana and learning to let go, learning to free ourselves from the greed, anger, and delusion, and the potential for these things that comes from ignorance. The sixth quality is sanctity. Um, sanctity refers to um, the location. Sanctity means in regards to our residence. So one thing that I was thinking about for this meeting was the the physical body um, and the, and how having a physical location, uh, a meditation center here has really changed and shifted. Uh, our organization it has disrupted and i think in a good way it has disrupted our, our our ordinary operating of the organization in in that it has uh provided a focal point for many people both locally and internationally it has moved us to a new level now of course we've had physical locations in Wat Khmer Krom, in, in Niagara, Niagara on the Lake we had a place, and Hamilton we had a couple, many of you are aware of, and have actually visited these various places. But having a place that is dedicated, uh, not just rented or borrowed or shared, but a place that is actually dedicated to a center um, through the gratitude and unending um, work and endeavor of Jeff and and of course the many people who have helped to make this possible is um has has really opened up the um possibilities and and the uh interest for so many people both locally and internationally it has begun to change the way people look at our organization uh, as being something uh, concrete. And so this idea of sanctity refers to our uh, appreciation, uh, not, not gratitude, I don't mean gratitude, but our uh, appreciation of the importance of location. And it's a reminder to maintain the sanctity of the location, that we um, keep the, the, the location clean, you know, things like uh, keep it quiet, keep it... Uh, conducive so we don't have uh, any kind of flashy or distracting um, um, sounds or sights or that sort of thing, that we, we are always mindful of the need for, for seclusion, that we don't uh, engage, we don't allow for meditators to sit around and chat, that we uh, impose or... or, or uh, we maintain the uh, state of the center as being conducive for meditation practice, that we're always conscious of the importance of maintaining a, a suitable environment. As the Buddha said, is, is, again, all of these are for, are the things that, are the qualities that will allow for the organization and for the Buddhasasana to continue to not decline. It will decline if we stop taking any of these seriously. And so if the location ceases to become something that we uh, cultivate as a suitable environment for meditation, then that is a great detriment to our longevity. So here we have a place, and if you haven't seen the pictures, if you've seen the pictures, you know that uh, we have now a, a meditation hall that is quite conducive, I think, for meditation practice. It hasn't been used much yet. Uh, we are still still have some clutter in it, and, and well, it, it's cold, so quite often the meditators stay in their rooms. But we also have the house with individual rooms for meditators. You know, many meditation centers require meditators to stay in, in, in dormitories or uh, meditate together in one room. 
And here we have this kind of luxury of allowing meditators to have their own room, and their own private space. Uh, we offer food cooked by the volunteers and organized by Jeff. And all to say that our facilities, I think, are conducive and, and adequate, to say the least, to allow for meditation to continue unimpeded. And so you know, just appreciation and, and a reminder of the importance of maintaining that sort of sanctity and remembering what this place is, what it's for, and how important it is to maintain that level of 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 uh, sanctity, the place stay a supportive environment for meditation practice, and finally hospitality. This is the best one. Hospitality. The Buddha used this word. My teacher Ajahn Tong was often, often reminding. Uh, his students of the importance of hospitality, reminding us that the Buddha reminded us of the importance of hospitality, which may not be familiar to many of you. It's not something we do hear about much. Uh, it doesn't sound like one of the core teachings, and yet it is one of the teachings the Buddha reminded of, um, reminded his students of that we should uh, patisantara karavata, that we should um, Garawa means uh, we should respect or revere hospitality. is not the right word exactly, but something like revere or, or hold in high importance hospitality. And the way the Buddha phrased it is that one should think that may any any monks. This is how you know using monks as an example. Any monks who are of good moral and, and ethical and, and uh, of good practice. If they have come to stay here, may they live in, in peace and, and harm and comfort and act and, and, and speak in such a way as to make them feel comfortable, make them feel welcome. And of course, this, this extends to meditators to, to and to visitors, receiving visitors, uh, showing them where facilities are, Offering them food and water. Uh, it's a very common thing in Buddhist societies like monasteries or even people's homes. When you visit, they ask you, Would you like some water? Would you like some food? They offer to, they're, they're very, the hospitality is a very central and important concept in Buddhist culture. And those who have not come, may they feel welcome. May they feel welcome to come. And so, of course, all of the many great works that have gone into providing information and, and portals for people to connect with our organization are just so invaluable. And, and the work that has gone into them uh, deserves so much appreciation. The work that goes into answering people's queries and, and facilitating people's applications, organizing space for people to come. All of this is such a, a, a great work and a testament to the strength and value of the work that this organization does. So, well, thank you all for, again, of course, thank you all for all the work that you do and all that you've done to follow, even without ever, ever have, maybe having heard of these seven qualities. Uh, to follow them all so well, and to continue to support the Buddha Sasana and to support your own practice and to support each other's practice. So I'd like to offer my sincere wish that everyone involved with this organization in, in whatever way progress in the Buddha Sasana and be protected by the Triple Gem and find peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. Sadhu. 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 Sadhu.
Sempurn so, you can be, uh, <laughs> I almost don't believe that I've stumbled upon a uh, community as special as this and I think in particular teacher as special as when you read the drama, it's, it's most, uh, I mean, if that's not magic, I really don't know what is. So, <laughs> um, well, um, I, we can open it up for questions and comments from everyone. So, I guess if, if everybody, if anyone would like to uh, share anything or say anything, questions, that they may have for us, uh, they're happy to uh, uh, take questions or comments. Sanda, I saw you raised your hand. Go ahead. Yes, thank you. So I want to give a bit of perspective from maybe the group of people from myself as a more as a beneficiary of um, the entire work or what's happening in the um, in the organization and i will start by mentioning that of course we are here together because of the buddha dharma and as i and as I see, the community uh, is for me, in a way, the Sangha. And uh, I, I'm starting to learn about what, what, what does it mean, um, the Sangha, because before entering and attending the Dharma study and interacting with people from the community, I didn't understand what the Sangha means. And um, I think all the Dharma talks, uh, the Sangha, um, the Dharma study, they are all a support for our practice, which, as Bhante said, is, is most important. And, um, of course, I have great appreciation for uh, what Bhante does for the entire community and uh, for each of us but i also have a great appreciation for all the people who do as we discovered today a lot of hard work and i know that doing that hard work is um is not easy <laughs> uh, and it, it's sometimes hard to do but it's also inspiring uh, for all of us uh, and maybe invite us to maybe do more if we can. And another um, term that I learned is Taliana Mitata, because uh, with all the people that I interacted, like Mila, Edith, Arthur, Jeff, and of course Bante, I felt that. Um, quality that I can um, have uh, that kind of uh, relating with, with, with them. I mean, I, I, I had like a real friend. And um, yeah, I, I don't know about uh, what, what, what happened with the other because I, I didn't understand why, why he stepped down. but. I want to um, offer my appreciation for all uh, the people who are involved in the in the community, and even though maybe we don't express our gratitude for what you all are doing, we are f uh, feeling and we are uh, being the beneficiary. Of uh, of your work and um, yeah, I wanted to express uh, that gratitude because sometimes it's important to be sad. So especially now, I don't know what that means, other that you you are stepping down, but um, I want to extend the appreciation, but also for for all the others. So uh, thank you very much.
Yes, thank you, Sanda. And I similarly feel appreciation towards towards all the volunteers and all the board members and everyone that's making this community happen. Mila. Uh, I just wanted to also um, express my appreciation, of course, and gratitude and Sanda's words uh, really um, uh, resonated with me that we don't always say it, uh, but we do feel it. And I personally do feel it, especially, you know, when I I encountered Buddhism seven years ago, and, or I don't know, somewhere around that. Um, and it just completely changed my life and um, just um, made it, I don't know, a million times better. And uh, I just really do appreciate that. And that was possible um, because other people made it possible. And um, I do uh, want to thank everyone and Bhante. Thank you so much. And um, uh, Adder stepping down, I think this is a great loss to the board of directors. And uh, thank you for your um, contribution. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you uh, as well. I, I do want to mention with me stepping down that um, there are various tasks that I do that can probably, you know, be handled by multiple people and be divided up. You know, there's there's serving as a director, you know, being on the board and being making those decisions is sort of one role. There's handling the actual movement of our finances, our bank accounts, signing um, signing leases and things like that. You know, ideally, if we could get a, a volunteer in Canada to do that, that would be ideal. And then, you know, bookkeeping and accounting and reporting, you know, that can also be be separated out into a different job. Um, and I do, you know, I intend to both remain uh, a part of our community as in practice and study and um, and in teaching as well. Uh, but additionally, I, I'm going to do my best to to help transition and and be a reference uh, as as we try to replace the various things I've been doing. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully that can go smoothly. Um, I'd like to say some things as well. Adder, thank you for all of your contribution. You have, we have very big shoes to fill. And yes, it will take a village to achieve all the things that you've achieved uh, with the organization. So thank you for, and I appreciate you. And, and I will, um, and I, um, and may I continue to, uh, uh, experience you within our community and our sangha. Uh, yes, thank you. And and Jeff, I do just personally want to make sure that you know that I really appreciate you, and you've you stepped into this uh, this community at a time when we were really just kind of barely cruising along, and and really revitalized it. Um, and I, I think the benefit from that can't be measured. Um, so thank you. Mm, thank you. Appreciate your words. Better. I also wanted to share with you maybe some insight on what it's like for me to live here and to do all this and to see all the amazing people that come in and out of this meditation center they come in with this weight that they're carrying and to see them progress 
it to see them progress throughout the course and and unburden themselves from those chains is something that I will never tire of seeing and experiencing and witnessing. And they've all become my brothers and sisters. And the the community that has rallied behind Siramanglo locally coming together and offering such good deeds and wholesome spirits that and attitudes that like when I go like I'm I'm invited with Bunte that's because I'm obviously his driver and attendant to all these different places like restaurants and other temples and I get to sit front row with Bunte um, and experience um, something that I don't like not very many people get to experience so I wanted to share that experience with you all to um, to and to also uh, you know express my gratitude and and I feel so blessed and lucky to have found the Sangha this community when I did and to find Bunke when I did and um, and so now to experience all these things that are, like I've only been a Buddhist for like maybe three years and to and none of it feels foreign to me it feels good it feels right it feels like home and and somewhat familiar which is shocking to me given my uh, past and um yeah you know and people who like the 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 stewards that come here and the other volunteers that come here and the food dana they've become like my brothers and sisters it's amazing i i i was one of the things that you know came up for me during the meditation practice and these courses is you know a sense of freedom and a sense and a new way to look at life and with that sort of vision i was i the fear did arise that i might not have a lot of friends like a lot of my friends that i had are no longer friends because we just don't share the same interests anymore like they want to talk about movies and music and i'm just like i don't really care anymore about that and 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 to and and i really thought that i would just be it would just be like me and one day and a few other people um but i had no idea this whole local community would just um arise and then um and and to be a part of it is just uh quite like it's I don't even know what to say. Like it's oh, beyond my expectation. And then when I see people, you know, who are online come come here in real life and do a course, and um, I get to host them, I get to cook for them. It's it's I don't get to know them by any means, but I get to guide them as a as a as someone who's been in the instructor course now. <laughs> Of well over a year and sitting in on all the reporting sessions the live ones during these intensive retreats has been again an honor a privilege a benefit a huge benefit to me i'm able to have more confidence in being the guardrails for the meditators so they you know uh, uh get the most benefit from their course um and and but after the fact, you know, I will maybe drive them to the bus station or something, and we will chat and and get to know them and to hear their 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 sort of new insight, if you will, and their new the new wisdom that they've cultivated through the practice and through the. It's like you know they're they're, they're so grateful and, and and appreciative, but the fact that that's happening means that they got something out of it and I and to be a part of that and to witness that to see Bunte so to speak in action <laughs> but um but it's just amazing it's I I feel so blessed and, and privileged I don't know how I got here um <laughs> but uh I I have uh I, I I obviously may continue to benefit everyone in our community and 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 those who are just finding out about us now um we invite you and i can't wait to meet you all in person so thank you everyone uh, do, 
I just uh, want to say a couple of words in regards to that. We, we were always waiting and hoping for our local Sangha to uh, form and uh, be helpful for Bante. And uh, I'm really happy to hear that that's happening. Uh, but I also need to just raise um, awareness about those people who come to the center, who who do the work, who who are there, and for for a couple of weeks, and then they go home, and we all scattered around the world, and and we do uh, this. These people, most of us, are alone. You know, you know place where we don't uh, really have contact with uh, similar-minded people. So I think the international and online community is really important too uh, in order to support all of our members, all of our people, uh, even even in Canada, wherever. Um, and uh, and I yeah, I just want to raise awareness uh, to to these people as well. I'm very happy that uh, on local uh, communities forming uh, and it's supporting Bante, of course. It's just um, my own interest and all of our every other person who did this course with us. Uh, all of their interests to be supported and helped. Oh, oh, thank you. Uh, we have more comments. Uh, yes. Well, that uh, brings us to the end of our AGM. Uh, we will definitely be stay uh, connected online, and um, shall see you all uh, on our Discord platform. So, thank you so much for attending. Sadhu. Take care and see you soon. Sadhu. 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 Thank you so much, Mante. Thank you all.